Randomness on the blockchain, it is incredibly difficult to get right. So let's take a look at a wrong randomness implementation and how we can hack this smart contract. This is another video in the Ethernaut challenge series. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out all our other videos because today we are going to be hacking the coin flip contract level three of the Ethernaut challenges. And let's just get into the code. So this is a coin flipping game and our goal is to build up a winning streak by guessing the outcome of a coin flip. And to complete this level, we need to use our psychic abilities to guess the outcome correctly 10 times in a row. And well, as you might guess, guessing a coin flip 10 times in a row, that is a bit hard. So uh, we'll need a way to, well, use some psychic abilities to actually do that. But let's look at this contract. So of course it's a coin flip contract and it starts with some um, some properties here. Some uh, And it has a consecutive wins value, uh, a last hash and a factor. Then we have a constructor and when this, pro this uh, contract is deployed, it will just set the consecutive wins to be zero. Um, and then we have our only function here, which is the flip function. And it's quite a lengthy function. It takes in a Boolean variable, a Boolean parameter guess, and it returns a Boolean as well. So the fir first thing it's going to do is a bit interesting here. It's going to create a uh, variable block value. And this val variable is a uint256. And it comes from a block hash um, taken by using a block dot number minus one. Now in a blockchain, every block is connected and every block can contain a number of transactions and every block has a specific number. So what this is doing, this is creating a hash out of the blocks number, the current blocks number. Then it's gonna continue to this if statement and say, well, if our last hash is equal to the block value, then we're gonna revert. After that statement, you see that the last hash is then set to be the block value. So what does this effectively do? It makes sure that this function can only be called once in every block. So you cannot call it, make this transaction multiple times in every block, because after it executes it one time, it's gonna set the last hash to be equal to the block value, um, which means that for our second entry, um, this if statement would well be true and thus revert the transaction. So that is kind of what that is for. Next up, it seems like we're finally calculating the coin flip and this is using that block value and dividing it by this factor, which is this incredibly large integer. So, okay, that is used um, to calculate a coin flip um, because in our next statement, we see that the side is uh, whether our coin flip is equal to one, then it's gonna be true. Uh, if our coin flip is not equal to one, then it's gonna be false. So that is kind of how this, uh, this is all calculated. Now this, the coin flip will probably be um, a, um, will probably be a number between zero and one. And this, um, this means that it will be rounded up or down. So uh, this will be about 50-50 since this factor is, uh, exactly the half of the biggest integer possible, I guess. So yeah, this will be about a 50-50 split whether the side is gonna land heads or tails. Um, so we have not really much that we can see there that can go wrong. Um, following this, we have an if statement. If our site is equal to the guess, then that means that, well, we've guessed correctly and the consecutive wins goes up. And otherwise the consecutive wins is reset to zero and false is returned. So this is kind of how this contract works. Now, one interesting thing here is that nowhere here have we actually used something explicitly random. We The random value here comes from this factor, but we know that, and this block value. And this block value is something that we also know because this block number is not private, it's not random, uh, it's just being hashed. That hash will always be the same for the same block number. So can we write a script that is gonna guess the flip, guess the side of the coin every time. Well, that's something that we're going to try out. So I've put all of this code into Remix. So let's head over there. Okay. And in Remix, I once again have my coin flip script here, exactly the same as the one we just saw. 
Uh, and then I've also created a new file, coinflipattack.solidity. I've imported the coin flip, and now here we can start kind of writing our attack. And our attack is gonna have a function, and I'm gonna call this function the flip attack function. Um, this function is not gonna take in anything, it's gonna be public because we wanna call it. And here we go. Here now we can define the function. So let's first of all start by guessing which side of the coin this is gonna land on. And that is really, really easy because we have all the information here. This is gonna calculate the side of the coin that it's gonna land on, so we can just copy paste that in. Now we don't need all of this. We just need to calculate our block value, um, then divide our block value by this factor. Uh, we don't have yet have the factor in here, so let's quickly also go and copy this factor into the script right here. There we go. Uh, okay. Yeah, and this is just going to calculate which side the coin is going to land on. And this is all perfectly fine because the block number will be the same if here we now call the flip function. Now, this won't work because, well, what is it going to call the flip function on? But um, if that, assume that works, then if we call the flip attack function, it's going to calculate these values then call the flip function. The flip function is then once again going to calculate all these values, but all these values are still exactly the same as when we calculated it earlier, because this is all happening in the same block, right? So um, yeah, that way we've beaten the randomness. Now we just need to figure out a way to um, actually execute this flip function. And this is also why we imported coin flip at the top here. So in order to do that, we're going to have another property here, which is going to be a coin flip property or of type coin flip. I'm gonna call it, uh, it's gonna be public and I'm gonna call it the victim contract. All right, now I'm gonna have a constructor and in our constructor, we're gonna pass in an address and this is gonna be the victim contract address. So we're, when deploying this attack script, we're gonna give it the victim contract address um, and that way it knows where to find this coin flip, uh, this coin flip um, contract. So, okay, so our uh, victim contract is gonna equal or uh, it's gonna be an instantiation or, well, it's gonna um, cast the address to a coin flip object. Um, and we can do that because obviously we have the source code here, so it can take its ABI and um, use that to, to know uh, to convert this address into an object that we can interact with. All right, with all that out of the way, we need a semicolon here. And now uh, in our flip attack function, we just need to call the flip function on our victim contract. And with all of that out of the way, we obviously still need to give the flip function the site to uh, flip to. So that is the site that we just calculated. And with all of that done, I think our attack script looks fine. It also compiles fine. So let's give this a shot. Now, first of all, we need to grab our, um, we need to actually have our coin flip uh, instance. So the challenge instance, we need to have that. So I'm gonna quickly copy the address. Okay, so I've just copied that address. I've also switched the environments to be the injected provider one, the MetaMask one. And I'm gonna paste in the address here because we're gonna deploy the contract coin flip at this address. Or we're not actually gonna deploy it, we're just gonna say, hey, um, instead of deploying it, here is the ABI, here's the contract, here's what you need to know. Uh, this address is of this type of contract and that way um, it can uh, put it here in the deployed contract and we can see its functions and we can see that currently, for example, we have zero consecutive wins. Um, now we need to actually deploy our coin flip attack contract. So I've compiled it, compiles fine. Up here we can see, okay, this is the coin flip attack one. And now we need to give it the victim contract address, which is of our coin flip. So let's quickly copy that, put that there and deploy it. And obviously MetaMask is then gonna pop up because we need to um, confirm this transaction. So let's confirm it. And then let's quickly wait until it has been mined. And there we go, our, trans our transaction has completed. And now we see here that we have our coin flip attack one here. So now we can call the flip attack function and again, confirm that transaction. 
So let's confirm it and wait for this to be uh, mined again. And our transaction has just been mined. So that's great. Now let's look into the coin flip contract, coin flip contract to see if we have succeeded. And yes, our consecutive wins has gone up from zero to one. Now, obviously now, if you want to solve this challenge, you can just manually call this coin flip attack, uh, this flip attack function 10 times. It is going to take a little bit of time. Um, so you can also automate this process. And to do that, I have made a little script here using uh, Brownie. And Brownie is just a Python environment that allows you to uh, kind of easily interact with contracts and, and, and do the same things as you can do in Remix, for example. Um, so yeah, what this pretty much exists of, I have a folder here, it has a contracts uh, directory with our coin flip script. It has our coin flip attack script here as well. Um, and then it has some scripts here. So the attack coin flip dot pi script is what I use. So we have one function here, which is the win coin flip function, which takes a certain amount of times that it wants to win. Then uh, it grabs the account, which it gets from uh, accounts.add, which is all in Brownie. And then I just give it my private key, which I have in the config here. Now we're gonna get the coin flip um, contract because obviously this contract is deployed by Ethernaut and we need to interact with it. So I have its address here. And then I actually need like an instance that we can interact with of this contract. Um, and for, for that, we're gonna use the contract.fromABI. So uh, I want to I want to get the contract here that is of type coin flip. Um, this is the address, and then this is the API, which I get from this coin flip contract that I have actually just uh, copy pasted here inside of the contracts folder. So uh, like I said, the API is kind of a, a an interface that defines all of the functions, all of the things that this contract has, and using that it can. Uh, allow us to to easily interact with whatever is at this address by well taking it from that ABI so it knows which functions there are to execute. Okay, with getting that coin flip uh, contract out of the way, we can now deploy the coin flip attack. So our coin flip attack is our coin flip attack uh, that we imported from Brownie. Dot deploy. We have to give it uh, an address, so the coin flip address. And then I want to do that from my current account. Okay, so we'll deploy that. Then we have to start our attack. So uh, the current amount of wins that we have is going to be coinflip.consecutive wins. While we have less wins than we want to have, we're going to execute that flip attack function. Uh, I'm then also going to wait um, for this transaction to be confirmed two times just to be sure that we are executing this in a different block because else we'll get that revert error. Um, and well, then we've performed another flip attack and we've hopefully gotten another win. Well, definitely because we cheated. Uh, then we're going to again, see how many wins we currently have, uh, print that out and continue until we have enough wins. Now in uh, reality, what that looks like is we can call brownie run scripts attack coin flip.py on the Sephalia network, and that will start executing. Now I will fast forward a little bit here so you can kind of see what this script does uh, because it will first obviously deploy the coin flip attack, which will take some time. It will then need to, well, execute the attack nine more times, uh, I guess, which will again take a bunch of time. Um, I won't for fast forward through all of that, but uh, I will see you back when uh, we have uh, done that 10 times and when we have completed this challenge. And as we can see, we have now flipped correctly 10 times. Uh, heading back into Remix, we can also check that. Now we have 10 consecutive wins, which means that we have solved this level. And so that has been it for this episode uh, where we solved the coin flip challenge of the Ether Not Challenge series. We've learned a lot of things. We've learned about how to generate random numbers in Solidity, or at least that any on-chain ways uh, are kind of not the way to go because there currently isn't a native way to generate random numbers on a chain. So what should you do? Well, you should use something like Chainlink VRF, which uses an Oracle 
um, to get verifiably random numbers on the chain. So if ever you're auditing a smart contract and you see some weird randomness that is not using an Oracle or not using a, a Chainlink VRF, then you know that that is something you want to look into because it should be possible to uh, to get that randomness or or to trick it uh, or to calculate that randomness beforehand so you can do whatever you want with it. But that has been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like down below. If you want to see more of this series, be sure to comment down below and subscribe to never miss another episode. That has been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.